Hello Internet. I'm back with some Gunpla. This is the high grade Universal Century RX-78 II Gundam, uh, the revival version, which just came out last month. Uh, last month being August, because, you know, these things persist onward through time. Um, this is the, I believe, third version of the RX-78, and kind of part of their whole hey, let's, you know, take some old kits and make them new again. Um, they recently did this with the the gun cannon. Uh, the Freedom Gundam was also last month. And kind of the Strike Gundam, they, they didn't really call that one a revived version, but they made a new high grade of it that is far superior to the the old seed kit. Um, but yeah, this here is the RX-78 II. Uh, I'll... Yeah, it's missing some things. I'll fix it in just a second. Um, but it is a overall a very nice kit. Um, I'm just putting it in the last shooting pose because it's iconic and cool looking. Uh, so, yeah, let's. I'll reattach some things and get him looking more like his normal self. And here's the Gundam looking uh, much more completed, much less just shooting Zeong in the face. Um, the proportions on this are much, much closer to the anime version than, say, the real grade, which took a kind of hyper-realistic approach with, like, panels everywhere. Uh, though it's not strictly anime proportions. Like, I I don't have the Masquerade 2.0, but I know that one was very much looking like it came from the anime. This, I would say, was probably more like the 1.0. But you know, moving in, it is the classic Gundam look with the you know the flat shoulders, the uh, usually like the thing you can tell is, is how flat the vents are and how much like paneling there is up here. Moving in, you can see there is some. It's gonna focus. There we go. Uh, there is some engraved detail you know in here. These, of course, a little bit of a uh, detail up on the arms. So this is, is, I would say it's a happy medium between a modernization and a 70s anime look. Some of the legs. Uh, yeah, overall, I'll turn it around, get a good look at it. Once it's panel lined up, it'll look nicer. Uh, as, as per my usual Gunpla videos, this has not had any paint or anything more than the stickers applied, with one exception in this case. Um, which I might as well show off now. These eyes. Uh, trying to, it's very hard to show on camera. Hmm. Give me just a second. I'll, I'll work up something to try to show it. Okay. <clears throat> so I've disassembled the face really quickly. Um, so hopefully it shows up better now. Basically, this this eyepiece right here was a translucent yellow, and uh, there are silver stickers that go on behind it. That's ooh, there we go. Yeah, that's a better view. Like I said, in in person, when the head's on it, it looks pretty good if you got a decent lighting setup. But there's silver behind this, and then it just shines through, so you kind of have a neat little eye effect. And then I just you know using I just used a gun to mark because I'm friggin' lazy. Um, just blacked out around it to get the actual eye effect. If this is not your your thing, there is just a normal eye sticker like most high grades. Um, yeah, let me get the head back together and then we'll continue on. So with everything back together, uh, yeah, like I said, the proportions are nice. Um, it's, it's engineered like a modern high grade. The I have the original high grade gun or not the original high grade gun the original high grade universal century gundam to show off um the one from I, it's around 2000 2001 ish uh i can show that off i don't have the g30th version because i'm gonna be completely honest i didn't realize it was that different until a couple months ago <laughs> um i just kind of missed the ball on that one but you'll see the the ball joints these are very much like uh I believe it started with Double O. I know it definitely continued into the Build Fighters line and the the Unicorn kits. Um, which actually, I guess Unicorn was kind of contemporary with Double O. 
but it, it continued on so where they're doing these new high grades they have this style of joint which adds a lot of posability to it and kind of a, a unified technique too um, which I guess build fighters took advantage of so you know you could be like oh hey I'm gonna stick my you know wing Gundam arm on my build strike or whatever um, but you know I'm just I'm showing off posability really quick but you know it's good movement nothing's like really hampered in the arm um, same with the the neck well the neck it doesn't look up as far as I'd like it to uh, mostly because like I, I had it in the last shooting pose doing a a headed last shooting pose it, it I don't know I, I kind of wish it could look fully up but I'm not really you know you'd, you'd have to mod you could I mean I could modify it's a model kit but you know, that's just like a minor nitpick, but I would like it to be able to do that. Um, I'd have to check the robot Damashi. I think it can do that. He's just got standard, you know, wrist ball peg thing. Though we'll note the, it's, I think it's a socket on, on my right arm's a little loose. Uh, it's more noticeable when it's got the beam rifle in there because it kind of tilts to one side. Uh, you do have the, the like, multi-jointed waist which is nice so you can go got some bend there got some backwards movement you have some rotation some side to, not actually much side to side but you know you got uh, the way it actually assembles is it's, it's very interesting there's let's see if I can show it off it's like this pegs in from here, but this part pegs in to this blue piece, so that gives it that, that forward bend. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, hips, once you get the skirt armor out of the way. And I did do the, the splitting the skirt armor mod, which I, I it's pretty much standard on everything I do. Uh, you can go like that. You can go out like that. You, know, you can actually, I think you can do a full splits. Yeah, pretty much. Um, not much backwards because the back skirt armor doesn't move at all, but overall pretty nice. You got the double jointed knee, and you've got the feet, which can do all kinds of stuff. So, like I said, overall, uh, very good posability. What I. Like, it doesn't reach build burning Gundam levels, I don't think, but build burning is basically made to be a posable Gundam. Uh, like, posable martial artist Gundam, but this is still very, very good. Uh, sticker wise, all there is is the aforementioned eye stickers, the. Uh, the red bits on the front and back of the head. And then the crotch bit right here. Uh, the underside of the the yellow part is molded, so if you push it down enough, you know, with a Q-tip or whatever, it, it does have a three D effect. I think I've got that going here pretty easily, but it looks it looks good. And you can always, you know, it's not that hard to paint. I've I've never had much success painting these types of V crotch emblems. I don't know if they have a technical name, but um, you could manage it. Like, this lining would help kind of mask it, but every time I've done it, it kind of, like, bleeds off the side. That's really annoying. Uh, again, I'm not an expert gun pull builder by any means. Another thing I like is these, the side, like, joint caps. There is, uh, they're hollow, so the gray shines through, which I think looks very nice. Normally, you know, this, I mean, down here it doesn't, so you kind of have to get in there with a marker or something and do that, but here it's pretty good. Then the, uh, the back thrusters, they don't move at all. They're just stuck in there, and this piece is removable so that the bazooka clip can go in. Okay, so take a look at the gun's arsenal. It has a fair bit, not as much as the G30th does. Um, but it does have its ever handy shield which connects just with a arm connector and if you want to stick the handle in there you can though it's not super necessary to hold it 
so it's that's that's pretty much up to you if you want to oop yeah you are supposed to remove this hand cap to actually put it on but if you just want to have it stuck on there it's it's basically the same it's just which visual effect you want uh, of course the back beam sabers are completely removable and there are the traditional you know beam saber blades these are of the fairly long variety uh, they are actually the exact same ones used on the whoops used on the freedom gundam so uh, a bit longer than i used to with the other rx78 gundams i've seen so, one there uh, and this one is a bit kind of bent so it, it works for that like swinging forward kind of like the like the blades kind of you know swiping this way this is just like the one I got was kind of bent in the package it's not a huge deal I think I have like a billion beam saber blades uh, you of course also have the ever handy beam rifle and it is complete with uh, a trigger finger hand sadly there's only one on the right arm so you can't have them like holding one on the left at least not with the trigger uh, this is nicely detailed it of course has the uh, yeah get this on here they have large clunky meat hook like hands there we go um, it of course has the movable handle for, for two-handed rifle poses and the rotating sight and it will just slap on like that and this is what I'm talking about like you move it around a little, little kind of flop to one side or the other it's just the joint I can straight uh, strengthen it up later uh, then Weapon wise, finally, it's got the good old hyper bazooka. You can either uh, stick it in its trigger finger hand. Ooh. I, know, I just I just got this back on here. Now I'm removing it. Go me. There we go. Okay, so you're stick the sugar hand back on here and pose it. And I'll mention the, the handle does move up and down to facilitate bazooka posing. Uh, I have, I don't think I've ever seen a Gundam like convincingly hold a bazooka. This is okay, but it, it, it always looks some kind of awkward just because you are kind of holding it at a holding your elbow at a 90 degree angle of something that's about to recoil massively I mean I guess a robot doesn't care about that but I don't know, it, it never looked really that natural uh, and then finally that's that's the last weapon that comes with by default but there are a couple of extra hands that are of the uh, open variety so if you wanted to say I think we can I think I can manage this uh, there we go. So if you wanted to say have it like hold the bazooka like this, you could do that. Uh, this of course completely blocks its actual sight. And whoops! Yeah, pushed a bit too far, I think. You can, but the yeah, point is you can you can do things with the hand. Uh, you could also just have it kind of like reaching out reaching out or or do a uh, get the other one going do a Gundam intro where you just like have just the hand raised up with you know a bunch of other open hands which are raised up just because uh, if you've never seen the original opening to Mobile Suit Gundam it is very 70s 
I don't think it's the most 70s robot opening ever, but it's pretty up there. Um, anyway, uh, the, the last little thing, and forgive me, I'm not going to bother removing the, the fist for this again, or the hand for this again, but there's just a bazooka clip. It does this. You pop... Comes off from bottom. You pop this piece off. And... I have this upside down, don't I? I did. There we go. Um, yeah, you just pop this in here, and now the bazooka is mounted to his back skirt. So, you can... You can have them all kitted out. I, of course, can't put the rifle in his hand because I don't want to mess with the trigger finger again, but you, you see the point. Um, so, that is that is what he comes with by default. That is less than the G30th version, which I believe came with the hammer and the uh, beam javelin, uh, which do exist for this, hint, hint. But... Uh, I also think the G30s is probably a bit more expensive. I'll have to, you know, I'll annotate what the retail price of Gunpla is, as usual, or not as usual, but down there. Uh, and this, this, I should mention this kit was like, I think it's a thousand yen, maybe eleven hundred, but you know, it's it's a not expensive kit, so it is a good, good piece of plastic for your for your buck or for your yen, as it would be. Um, so next I will move on to some comparisons, though I'm going to give him a more traditional holding a rifle pose, so be right back. Okay, it is now time for comparisons. Uh, for starters, his height, about five inches or so, yeah, four and a half to five, again, I, I kind of have to manage the, uh, the height difference between what I'm looking at and what the camera's showing. So we'll, we'll go four and three quarters. Um, then for the the obvious comparison, here he is, and forgive me because this does not look great. Uh, this is the original RX seventy eight high grade, high grade Universal Century, as opposed to high grade um, the like early nineties line, which I only own one of. In there. I mean, I'm sure they're great for the time, but they are 20-year-old kits, so. Um, yeah, this one, you'll notice, is a bit thicker around the edges. I think this is actually more anime style than this one is. But, you know, notice the broader chest, the uh, kind of chunkier legs. St I mean, the, it's, it's stiffer movement, but... Uh, you know, that's to be fair. And now, uh, this one doesn't look great because I painted it about 15 years ago. Uh, I don't think I did a very good job. And it's, in addition to that, it's not holding up very well. But, I mean, it's it's not, this is not a bad kit, but this is sleeker. This is better proportioned, in my opinion. This one just looks a bit fatter. Uh, and here's what I'm talking about when I, when I was talking about the, uh, the V crotch kind of bleeding. I don't know if it shows up very well, but it, it's not perfect. Uh, um, yeah, and this is obviously much less poseable. It has the, for starters, the hip skirts or side skirts only go up that far. Uh, and the the leg joints are this kind of ball socket, which don't really give much outward motion as opposed to the more modern style. And its beam saver fell off. Um, but, yeah, that's just, just, like I said, comparing the old and the new. Uh, I unfortunately don't have the G30th, though I think it's kind of more similar to this one than this one. Um, also, the the beam saber blade is the, the old one's beam saber blade is a good deal shorter which is why I was kind of surprised how long these were um, so that is it with the old one let's show it next to some uh, let's say imitators or, or homages if you prefer 
given you know it's all the same company, so no one's actually like ripping anyone off. Here it is next to his 21st century companion in the or 21st century remake, the Strike Gundam, and here he's next to his 2010s remake, the G Self. Uh, I didn't put packs on either of these just because they are far easier to stand up. But yeah, you can look at these and kind of see the the DNA of them, of this in them. Also, all rifles and shields. Um, but yeah, overall, like I said, this is a a good version of the RX-78. Uh, the RX-78 itself is kind of the gun block with a little comfort food. I've got a, a bunch. Uh, not even, I mean, I'm not even going to figures. I think I have at least six. So, uh, and another one isn't bad. Plus, again, it's it's not a, a it is not a, an expensive piece. So, and, you know, like I said, you, it looks good. It's it's a good modernization with still that kind of 70s aesthetic without looking too 70s. Um, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more in the future given that Gundam The Origin is now getting an anime, and I'm sure by, like, the third or fourth episode, the gun will actually appear in it. Um, oh, yeah, uh, we are not done taking a look at this kit yet, even though this, this particular video is over, because I kind of butt something with it. Oh, well, these aren't in frame. Yeah, those extra parts from uh, from manga magazines so we will show those off another time uh, I'm going to detail this guy up a bit just to prove that I actually do it so uh, until then uh, Moyagare Gandamu and uh, yeah bye everybody <laughs>